right, hold up, hold up. Let me let it warm up real quick. Let it warm up real quick. Let this thing warm up real quick, real quick. Interesting video. Interesting topic of discussion. A lot of people obviously believe that Rakia Jackson will be National Player of the Year. People believe that Caitlin Clark is a no-brainer to win it. Okay, and a lot of people really don't know who actually, maybe outside of Cameron Brink, I guess you would say, uh, Aaliyah, excuse me what I'm talking about, Aaliyah, Caitlin, Cameron, and then Rakia. That's sort of how you could see it. It's like, okay, for me, those, those would be the ones I would assume will win National Player of the Year, right? I'm not going that route, okay? Now, it's pretty obvious that I possibly should have picked Caitlyn, okay? Possibly. Which, most likely, it probably will be Caitlyn, just based on the roster, the makeup of the roster. Upperclassmen, some good players, nice recruiting that they had. And Caitlin is on a different level, me watching her training in the offseason. So obviously it looks like Caitlin could easily win it again. But I wanted to go for players that I believe is just gonna surprise people. Okay. And the first player I want to talk about is Juju Watkins. Okay. USC, and th this is why I believe that she'll have some really good success, okay? Number one, they have so many upperclassmen. They have about seven or eight upperclassmen. I believe it's, I believe it's exactly seven, but it could be eight. Eight upperclassmen, right? We're talking about juniors and singers. They have about four to five players, 5'10 five, and under. So they got a 5'10 player, they got a about two or three 5'9 players, and then they got like a player 5'6 and, and another player 5'7. But everyone else is six feet and over, so they have plenty of guards, six feet, six foot two, six foot three, six foot one. Juju is six foot two, by the way. And then they have Raya and Clarice, which are their bigs. Raya is six foot four, six foot five. Uh, she plays uh, forward. She actually is a guard, if we're being honest, but she's sort of a swing player. She could play three positions, wing, power four, center. And then Clarice is six foot six, close to six foot seven. All right. And obviously their coach is Lindsey Gottlieb. This woman was just not too long ago an assistant coach in the NBA for, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. She was a longtime coach for the Cal Bears. She coached Laysha Claren and a bunch of other good players. And she's a very, very, very good coach, Lindsey Gottlieb, right? So a lot of people, they're forgetting about this, right? They're, they, they really are. The size that they have at guard. The size that they have at guard. They got two really tall bigs. One is 6'6", six, and six, Shoes, she's 6'7", Clarice, and then Raya is 6'4", and Shoes, she's 6'5". And she could play three different positions, by the way. Their guards are 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 6 6 feet. And then they got some shorter guards. They got like one that's 5'10" two that's five foot nine a five foot six one and a five foot seven one but the key is that they have like eight upperclassmen okay they got eight upperclassmen juniors and singers that's that's what's key and so when you have an experienced coach who coached in the nba she got her team deep in the ncaa tournament before when she was with cal 
the team is on the rise, this experience, X's and O's coach like Lindsey. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you right now, this is going to free up Juju. Juju is going to have so many different opportunities. I'm just letting you know right now, it wouldn't shock me if Juju came extremely close to flirting with a triple-double for the entire season. I'm talking about seven rebounds, seven assists, 15 points a game, 16 points a game. I think that gets her in the conversation for not only freshman of the year, but the national player of the year. Anytime you can average 15 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and that's just that. Like, we're not talking about, I believe she can get you two steals a game. I believe she's going to get you about 1.5 blocks per game. Okay? She'll shoot from the field, I believe, about 45, 46%. Three point line, I think she can give you about 33 to 34% from the three point line. Free throw line, I think she could shoot about 79 to 81%. Okay? Now, she may surpass those numbers, right? And obviously, what, what helps you get there is a successful season. And seeing the number of upperclassmen that they have, the talent that Juju is, the coach that they have, the conference that they play in, okay, which obviously it looks like they're going to be running up against UCLA, right? And then here comes Stanford. But, and then you got to think about Arizona. Her success against those teams, and if she's putting up great numbers against those teams, that's really going to make her stand out, especially if they could walk away winning that, that conference, okay, and winning those games. She's going to look great. Like, you're going to have to make her, obviously, freshman of the year, and which means she's probably going to potentially end up winning national player of the year. A lot of people aren't really considering that. They're not factoring that in, right? So that's something to think about as well. Then we move on. We move on to Paige Beckers. Paige Beckers, they got upperclassmen, but they have a nice balance, right? So UConn, they have upperclassmen. They got some really cool freshmen, and then you got some nice little sophomores. So they have a nice balance. And that's the way Geno likes it, right? Obviously, you're coached by the legend, Geno Smith, right? So that helps. Paige Beckers is back. She's fresh. Looking at her working out in the offseason, she looks amazing. We're talking about she's six feet. Her passing ability, court vision, willingness, willingness to pass the basketball. Very accurate. Passes with great anticipation. Okay. Uh, her shot, her clutch making ability, the fact that she can also shoot it really from deep. Uh, her athleticism, being able to make adjustments in midair. Uh, she's a three-level score, uh, high IQ player, and people forget that she's really, really good on defense. A lot of people forget that, that Paige Beckers is extremely good on defense. Okay, she's a hustle player. She's gritty. She gets nasty. She plays with a lot of effort and en energy, passion, and intensity. And then when you look at who's surrounding her from AZ Fudd to Caroline to... Nika Mule to Aaliyah Edwards to Audrey Gibson to just, I mean, Griffin to just a, a bunch of bunch of talent, just loaded with talent. <clears throat> OK, players coming back from injury that was injured last season, just all of this stuff. OK, I believe Ice Brady, uh, like it's just a bunch of players coming back. So UConn is set. UConn is set. You got you got size. You got players coming back from injury who would have made a huge impact last season. You got upperclassmen. You got really good guard play as well. You got players who will most likely be drafted in the first round or at least the second round of the WNBA. You have a good balance of upperclassmen and some decent, some good freshmen and some sophomores up in there. Okay, and then you're, you have an excellent coach. Excellent coach, right? So this is what it is. So this means that you really can't double 
page because then you're going to get burned by Aaliyah Edwards and Nika and Caroline and the rest of the women on the team. Like, it's going to be a huge problem. That team is deep. That team is loaded. And so this means that Paige is going to create, not only for herself, but main, mostly for her teammates. They're going to win a lot of games, right? I can see Paige Beckers at the end of the season. I can see Paige Beckers with about, averaging about 18 points per game, shooting 43% from the three-point line. From the field, her field goal percentage for the season, I think would be around 48 to 51, 51, 52 percent free throw percentage. I would be, I, I believe it would be in the mid to high 80s. I believe she'll get you about two steals per game, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 blocks per game. I believe that her rebounds would be about five. I think Paige will get you about five rebounds a game. She's a willing rebounder. By the way, I think she'll get you about five rebounds a game. I think Paige will get you. I think she's going to probably get about seven to eight assists a game and will only average about two turnovers per game. So her sister turnover ratio would be exquisite. And like I said, the 18 and I listen, I'll say 18 points. I don't think she'll get you 20 points. I think Paige will get you 18, eight assists. I would say five to six rebounds a game, two steals, 0 0.8 blocks, only two turnovers a game, shooting about 42% from the three-point line, 85 to 88% from the free throw line, and about anywhere from 48 to 52% overall from the field. And then we're also talking about winning, 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 right? And so that gets Paige Becker's into that conversation right so then we move on to the university of south carolina south carolina gamecocks women's basketball team and so now we have to have a conversation about camilla cardosa okay that's the one right there she just came off of a championship run with brazil looked amazing and great okay Six seven, six foot eight in shoes, beautiful, graceful, physical, strong, tough, tenacious, smooth around the rim. She can hit the mid-range shot. She can attack the basket. She's a shot blocker, rebound, a high IQ, really good screen, a really good box out player. Uh, keeps the ball high. Oftentimes when she rebounds and off the offensive glass. She'll catch it and put it right back up immediately instead of gathering it and bringing it down. She has a high IQ around the rim offensively. Uh, she's coachable. She's pliable. Like I say, just a, a smart player, a smart player, right? And she's just so experienced, not just from the States, but playing with these grown women in Brazil and winning a championship. And so just that kind of experience you can't teach it. You got to go through it. Now, she's going to have so many opportunities be, to really di have more variety in her game because either you're going to double her like you did Aaliyah Boston and triple her and leave everyone else open or you got to figure out what are you going to do with Ashley? What are you going to do with Bree Hall? What are you going to do with Raven uh, Hollywood and... Talasia and just all of these talented players and Chloe Kitts and all of these talented players that South Carolina has. I mean, South Carolina is absolutely loaded from top to bottom, loaded. Now, what I will say is that South Carolina doesn't, for me personally, they don't have a good mix of a lot of upperclassmen. And so I would like to see how that would play out. I mean, they're not like Southern California when they got like eight upperclassmen okay but what they do have is that they're just flooded with talent just absolutely inundated in talent South Carolina and then we got to talk about the legend the living legend Don Staley right okay and the reason why I put Camilla in there because I, I, listen like who are you gonna double number one 
who are you going to take away? If you play zone, she's, she, Camilla's going to beat you in zone. If you triple team her and double team her, she's a smart player. She's going to kick it out. So which means what? Camilla is most likely probably going to shock a lot of people and end up averaging four assists a game. Four assists a game, y'all. She might even get that thing up to five assists, but I think she'll get you four to five assists a game. Camilla will most likely get double figures and rebounds. Okay, we're talking about 12, 13 rebounds. She's taller than Aaliyah Boston, a longer wingspan than Aaliyah Boston, more athletic than Aaliyah Boston. She's a high IQ rebounder, high IQ box out. She, her IQ for boxing out is Mensa, Mensa. Okay, she's a damn good screener and she's a really good two-level scorer. Plus, she's super experienced. Great shot blocker as well. Smooth around the rim. Okay, high IQ around the rim offensively, so you can double and triple her at your own peril because she passes out uh, really well. So I think she'll end up averaging four to five assists, right? And I think she'll maybe commit, and I don't think off the passes she'll commit really many turnovers. I think her turnovers might be fumbling the basketball or something like that, and it went out of bounds, right? So I think she'll get you about four to five assists a game, Two turnovers a game, that's still a solid assist to turnover ratio. Double figures and rebounds. We're talking 10 to 14 rebounds per game. All Obviously, double figures and points. I think she's good enough to get you 20 points a game. But we'll see. So I'm going to be I'm going to be safe here. And I'm going to say Camilla will get you 12 to 20 points per game. She will average a double double the C for the season. That's facts. That's a true story. So she's going to average a double double. Will it be a big double double in terms of the point production? Will she be 20 points per game with 12 to 14 rebounds per game? Or will it be 12 points, 13 points per game to 12 rebounds per game? But now let's get into the block shots. Okay, so if Brooke Flowers from the St. Louis Billikens and she was six foot five super long wingspan by the way I think she should have been drafted it's insane I mean she averaged 12 points nine rebounds and like four blocks per game she was like 3.9 3.8 3.9 blocks per game that's essentially four blocks and she didn't get drafted that's insane right and she took it to Tennessee in a tournament Brooke Flowers okay so anyway I'm off of that right so if Brooke Flowers at six foot five can average 3.8, 3.9 blocks per game, nine rebounds, and 12 points per game. Okay, what do you think Camilla's gonna do? I think Camilla can easily get four blocks per game. Easy, without question. But let's be fair, let's just let's just give her three for right now. I don't want to sell her short though. I mean, this is a this woman is a vicious, nasty shot blocker. She plays with a mean streak. A, a great motor her conditioning is really good we we're just gonna have to see how Don coaches her in terms of minute allocation and substitutions and how Don uh, plays that out but the way I see it double figures in points double digits in rebounds three to four blocks a game and the shocker I think is five assists a game with maybe two turnovers Okay, I think that's going to blow people's minds. And, it, and obviously, South Carolina will be winning a lot of games. They'll be the favorite to win the SEC uh, conference. Okay, and so at this point, we're looking at Camilla uh, being mentioned as a candidate, a nominee for player of the year. Okay, so I, I just think a lot of people aren't even thinking about her. I think when they think of Camilla... They're thinking, oh, she's going to, you know, do great things and South Carolina is going to win a lot of games. They're not thinking that she's going to have the same impact that Aaliyah Boston had. OK, and I don't in Aaliyah Boston player of the year. So I don't I don't understand why you're not considering her in, in some cases, potentially the runaway favorite. And I think a lot of people say you're crazy. The runaway favorite is going to be Caitlin Clark. That could be true. But I don't understand how you couldn't mention or you're not mentioning uh, Camilla from South Carolina. That makes no sense to me, right? 
<laughs> like, come on, it's not like she's running a new system. This is essentially the same system. Uh, and what I will say, Don has more length and more size and more versatility. Okay, uh, her new freshman guard is coming in with freaky, insane uh, pro am, Drew League, Dykeman League, uh, freaking. Uh, uh, what's old boys pro am league? What's old boys pro am league used to play in the NBA? The crossover league, Jamal Crawford, these type of handles. She's coming with the crossover league, Drew League, Dykeman League type of handles, right? Goodman League, uh, Cherish Shore Park type of handles, right? Uh, and just her creativity. And then you you pair that with this physical, strong uh, Raven Hollywood Johnson who's back for a vengeance and will never get shooed away again. And then we talking about Ashley, physical, strong, jump out the gym, adding more versatility to her game and Chloe Kitts coming off an impressive uh, run you, so like this uh, when in the championship this is on a different level this is on a completely different level Bree Hall like like South Carolina is on a different level and then you, we're talking about six seven out of shoes six foot eight in sneakers Camilla with a living legend Don Staley in that same system ladies and gentlemen this is a problem now, let's say if you replace Camilla with Aaliyah with this same roster, everyone would be saying, oh, oh, it's easy. Aaliyah's gonna win national player of the year. That's easy. So why aren't we saying this about Camilla? It makes no sense. Like, so I understand Caitlin Clark is the superwoman or whatever you, I listen, I don't watch cartoons or Marvel shows. I don't know who's the next female superhero. I have no idea. But she's their, their freaking superhero or whatever the hell you wanna call it. Is, I mean, that's clear. That's clear. That's who she is. So she's always going to have the basketball in her hand. Her usage rate is through the roof, right? She's going to be able to facilitate for others and throw up a bunch of shots and score a bunch of points, maybe 30 points, 29 to 30 points a game, maybe eight or nine assists. Okay, she'll get you four rebounds a game, right? Uh, two steals. Okay, shoot a pretty high percentage from the three-point line. Like, we know what Caitlin is going to do, right? But because the competition isn't as great in terms of who they'll play against, I think their out-of-conference schedule has to be elite. And if it's not, I just think the voters, they may say, well, I don't think we can just, just make her a shoe-in. Looking at the competition, okay, we know she's going to get most of the touches because the ball is in her hand 100% of the time. I just don't think we should just give it to her like that when we're looking at what Camilla is doing and arguably the most competitive, most difficult conference in the country. Juju Watkins, as a freshman, okay, is doing great things with the University of South Carolina, right? And then what Paige Beckers is doing coming off of the surgery, the injury, and playing an elite out of conference schedule and winning all of these games. And like I said, Juju uh, getting wins potentially against Arizona, right? Getting wins potentially against UCLA and Stanford, right? And all of that. I think that you have to put these people in a conversation. Like I said before, a lot of people they're not paying attention to USC. And to, for me, what stands out the most about the University of Southern California, the Trojans, the Lady Trojans, is that they have like eight upperclassmen. Like, I don't, people just don't understand how valuable that is and how much that matters that you got seven or eight upperclassmen. Okay, now you don't have a lot of depth and size as it pertains to your bigs, right? You got two bigs that are tall, like 6'6", six, six, Clarice, right? So, and you know, and Raya, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, so you got like two bigs. And after that, you got a six foot three wing. And then you got Juju, 6'2", and then you got a bunch of guards, six foot two, six foot one, six feet. Okay, they could switch over. You have you a 5'11 guard, a 5'10 guard, and like two 5'9 guards, and a 5'7 and a 5'6 guard. But the most impressive thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that they have like eight upperclassmen. Okay, <laughs> like I'm telling you right now, that, 
that matters. That matters because when you look at the other USC, right, South Carolina Gamecocks, they don't have a lot of upperclassmen. You understand? And so Dawn is going to have to sort of figure that out. She's going to have to work her way around that. I, I think she'll do just fine. Um, and then, like I said, with UConn, they have a great balance of upperclassmen and freshmen and some really good sophomores. So they just have a good mix. But we're talking about Southern California with like eight upperclassmen. Like that is on a different level. Being coached by Lindsey Gottlieb, who was just coaching the Cleveland Cavaliers. Much success at Cal. A damn good X's and O's coach. Okay, that's just on a different level right there. And and Juju, I'm telling you right now, six foot two, close to six foot three, three level score handles, can play multiple positions, generational talent. It's just different. It's just different. And like I said, I think she'll come close to flirting with a triple double for the season. Okay, so I think she'll be three rebounds off of averaging double digits, double figures and rebounds. Okay, right? So like I said before, I think Juju would get you 15, 15 points per game. She may even squeak you 17 points per game. I think she'll get you about seven rebounds a game. I think she'll get you about seven assists. Two steals, about 1.5 blocks per game. Okay, shoot a respectable field goal percentage, a respectable three-point percentage, a respectable free throw percentage. I think turnovers can sort of get her because she's new to this. So I think she may average about three to four turnovers per game. But if we're talking about 15 to 17 points a game, seven rebounds, seven assists, two steals, one block a game, and they're winning a lot of games, and it's primarily really because of her, and they're beating Stanford, they're beating UCLA with Lauren Betts, okay, <laughs> right? Right? Like, they're beating Arizona. I think at this point, you have to put Juju in there, right? So those are my three that I, I'm focused on. I know people are thinking about some of these other ones, Rakia Jackson, right? I, I, I get it. Okay, I totally get it. But I'm going with these three right now, and we'll just sort of figure it out as it goes. I'm Listen, I'm a Mississippi State fan. Right. I mean, I could say Jessica Carter. Right. But I'm not going there. I'm just going with these three. OK, I hope Jessica Carter wins it. <laughs> but I'm going with these three for right now. I'm just going to be fair and go with these three for right now. That's just sort of what I believe. I think that that's just how that's that's going to fly. Right. So let's get ready. I'm bored with the WNBA. I hope everything works out um, tomorrow and we can get some good good games tomorrow and hurry up and get to this commissioner's cup. But uh, yeah, let's get ready for college and let's see where this goes. All right, let me get off of this phone, man. That's it.